Hey, welcome back to the Ready State. Today we're going to talk about the tendon pain program. Now, I don't want to get into the weeds on is it tendonitis, is it tendinosis, is it tendinopathy? We have pain in the tendon region. What we know is that heavy training and athleticism sometimes begets problems in the interface of musculature onto bones for whatever reason. Overtrained, underslept, too much alcohol, sitting in a long position for a long time, had to get in a car and then go to training camp. It doesn't matter. What matters at some point, of course it matters, we're going to do a sort of post facto decompression of trying to understand why you're having this symptom in the first place, comma, but now we've got it, right? So we're always talking about, hey, can, what can I do to desensitize it? How do I reperfuse it? How, what can I do to help the, the system normalize that, that thing? Whether that's my brain saying, hey, this is not a problem, or, hey, I'm deep into this issue because I'm a professional athlete or a cyclist and I gotta get something done, and now, how do I program for it? So mobility aside, sensitization aside, desensitization aside, tendon health aside, right, diet, sleep, nutrition, all those things. Let's talk about sort of the foundation of this. Now this really works generally for everything that we're doing around sort of when we're beginning rehab. But what we want you to understand is that when we have pain in a tendon, let's ask explicitly, what does a tendon do? So what does a tendon do? What does a tendon gotta do? It's gotta eccentrically load, it's gotta stop, and it's got to concentrically load, right? Those are the three things that a tendon do. So if some part of your program isn't exposing a tendon to those things, then you're going to have incomplete function. And ultimately, how do we know that your tendon is healed? How do we know that this thing, this thing has been successful? Not that you don't have pain, but you can return to your sport. You can return to your role in society. You can return to your role in the family. So that's really the, the main goal. And hopefully you don't also have pain. So noticing that pain does not necessarily mean I'm injured, but I can certainly have a really unhealthy tendon, get out of pain, and still be in the process of rebuilding this thing. Okay, so couple rules. One, when this happens, we usually default to slow. And if you are familiar with our language, we call these category one movements. Cat one movements. And the reason we call them category one is that I have a clear start position and a definitive finish position and I come back up. I don't have a lot of speed. Those movements can be performed with speed, but they don't have lots of change in direction. And the difference would be a strict press versus a push press. A squat versus a power clean or a big dynamic motion, right? So when we start taking some of the speed out of this thing, then we can make sure that we're using that tendon and loading it through a full range. Start position, finish position. We don't have moments where there's huge accelerations on it and then instantaneous sort of, sort of reconstitution of position. So we move down to slow category one movements and those category one movements always are the roots of every good strength conditioning program heavy step ups, uh, back squat, front squat, split squat, press, bench press, pull up, push up, slowing coming back to the basics before we add a whole bunch of crazy speed to this thing. Speed is the thing that we add last. So when we're trying to, we see a junky tissue, in this case a tendon, one of the first things to do is it will slow the system down. And remember, anyone's program on the internet, you should look through, and when you see a movement problem, or you're seeing a tissue health problem, there's usually only two things that everyone is doing in the first place. They're either doing tempo, moving slowly through range, or they're doing isometrics, maybe at end range, maybe mid range, or they're stopping. And that should fit with our, with our idea, hey, we're gonna make sure that we have this heavy loading, we're gonna slow it down, and slow is shorthand for tempo, so we've got some really good, solid eccentric work, and then we pause at the bottom or the turnaround where the athlete begins to compensate, we begin to see lose positional capacity and, and, and issues, pause, and come back up. So first order of business, when something hurts, slow down, let's get some volume in there. And that volume we've taken right out of uh, a page out of the basic linear progression model. So there are so many ways to periodize, so many ways for progression. 
Guys like Mark Ripito have been talking about this. Coach Mark Ripito has been talking about this forever. Pavel is huge on these basic linear progressions. John Wellborn has been putting people on basic linear progressions and getting massive gains forever and ever. And so when we are end up having a pain related problem, the first thing we do is try to reduce complexity in the program and we come back to basic linear progressions, which is a shorthand for lots of exposure. So if you are having a knee tendon problem, you're going to see us and you're going to do something a lot. So let's say I've got a little bit of a hot knee. We're going to squat every day. So I'm going to shoot for three to five sessions a week. And that's shorthand for you can do this every day in the basic linear progression every day. And ultimately what we're shooting for is five by five. That basic idea. Once I'm warm, I've gotten some things in, I'm going to make sure that I've got these three second eccentric pause for a second, three second control. There's less, don't get too caught up in the weeds. The idea is, hey, let's move through this range with intention and control. Let's pause and then let's come back up. And five by five eccentric front squats are brutal. So I can change my position to get challenge the knee a little bit, challenge the hip a little bit more, challenge the ankle a little bit more. But ultimately, this is going to be the base. If you feel like I'm feeling good and you want to push this up to eight sets, that's fine. A long time ago, Pavel was like, dude, you need more volume than those fives? Let's do another set of fives. Let's do, keep doing sets of fives until stimulus has been met. But remember, the goal is I started with a 20 kilo bar here is ultimately to just add a couple kilos, one or two kilos, every single time I go. And so what we're trying to do is unload the tissues from their speed, from the demands of change in direction and stabilization. We're trying to get these things engorged with blood and under consistent load. And let's put ourselves on a shaping gradient where we can begin to normalize that function and begin also just to tell the brain we're coming. So don't panic, which instead of saying, let's rest and get off it, let's say, hey, let's back off. Let's work slowly. And a lot of times when we have tendon pain, we can move slowly and we can find that we can continue to train, continue to normalize the function in that tendon as long as we keep it slow, put ourselves on basic linear progressions, which means we're going to strip the weight way down and try to get a lot of frequency in three to five times a week of squatting, right? That could even be a goblet squat. I just work my way up through the dumbbells. And then five by five, as many as eight sets. And this is one of the ways that we can begin to simplify and demystify this. So I don't, my knee hurts, I don't have to freak out. What I want to do is say, hey, do I have a healthy tendon? Well, let's give that tendon the health and the programming requirements so that we can normalize that function. Does that mean that you can't desensitize at home? Does that mean you can't try to change perfusion? How much blood flow is in there? Can you do blood flow restriction and tool scraping and, and work upstream and downstream and try to improve your mechanics? You can do all of that, comma, let's simplify the system, let's slow it down, let's get that tendon under load. How do tendons heal? We load them. How do we get them stronger? We load them. And so unloading the tendon for long periods of time is not going to work. Besides, you're walking around. You're not unloading it. But let's be a little bit more formal in, in the ways that we're doing this and chasing that. Guarantee you this will help you begin to wrap your head around this, uh, this, this debilitating squat ending problem, which is tendon pain. See you guys tomorrow.